I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Um, roll call. All board members are present. All right. Uh, item number four, approval of the agenda. Motion, please. Move to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor? Uh, I guess we got to do a vote on it. Um, yeah. We could do a voice vote. Let's do a vote. We just, we always do, Mr. So. Howe? Yes. 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 Function carries. Okay, next item is a consent agenda approval. Uh, motion to approve, please. I have a couple questions on this one or after the motion. The, um, the minutes under consent agenda should read September 26th because that's um, 12th was approved the meeting before. So, and it was a it was a um, budget workshop too. I don't know if you care to put that in there for the minutes and for the agenda, but um, the date on that on the approval that we are looking at is September 26th. Not the 12th. Right. It's listed right on the minutes themselves. It was just listed okay, on, then, right, on the agenda. Yeah, then we should uh, correct that. Yeah. But it, it's a, a, yeah. it was I, a budget workshop, too. Usually we noted that. I don't, I don't know if the matters a whole lot either way. Well, be glad to do that. We can add it. Um, I had a, a couple questions on those grants, too. Do you want to do that now or after the motion? or? Um, and receive and file. That's in receive and file, yep. Might as well do our questions. Well, it Take says on. notification of grants. To me, that's saying that we got the grant and we're just telling everybody. This is actually where we are being asked to approve the grant, a uh, uh, grant submission, correct? Is that in your department there, that Kearney? Kearney? Carney Strong Grant? And yes. And the FEMA. They're probably both. You want to explain so, that so the board to, uh, is being asked to approve these, correct? Approve the application to right. go after the grants. So when it says notification, I it's just a little um misconstruing. You know, it, it's not telling us what we're doing. The board is really approving that. The one grant says it needs a resolution. So it's I think a little easier to have it as a separate agenda item for that purpose. Gary, you got any comment on that? Which one requires a formal written resolution? The one that is from FEMA says it requires a board resolution. So the top of the form says notification of grant program application. <coughs> and I believe this is a form that we inherited. That's the one we came up with. I would say we came up with that. Yeah. So that's, you no, know, I know what the form says, but the board action is to approve it. And that's what the agenda should tell people what we're doing. Okay, then it should say notification of application mm -hmm. in each case. Or request for approval of the application. Oh, Councilor has a comment. Yes. It seems like on these grants tonight and going forward, you would just change the agenda description to approve application for. Right, that's what I'm getting at. And as related to the FEMA grant, if it requires a resolution. I would suggest you remove it from the consent and act on it separately with a motion, which can serve as a resolution. Yes, Chief. This is just to apply for the grant. We have the choice of turning down or accepting the grant, which is the point that we need the resolution for. It's a 5% five, 5 matching grant on whatever the amount is. But only if we get it. Only if we get it. And then you, they need a resolution it. after we... Oh, to accept it? Right. To after. accept it if we get it. So this is this is following our format that says, as we came up with a long time ago, you got to ask if you can apply. This is an application, notification of application, only. So FEMA doesn't require the resolution to apply; they just no. require it if it's accepted. Yes, ma'am. Not even I withdraw my comment. Would it? Okay. Well, we can change. We, let's let's put the, the word application 
notification of application for before each of those. That's our notification. Does that work? Well, or to say approval of the application. There you go. Approval of application. Yeah, for the FEMA grant or for the other grant. Because, you know, it's, it's all about that public transparency. What are you doing? Approval of what application. Is the board doing? So should it be more under the approved section than the receive and file section? Yes. Okay. So we'll just move that. And actually that goes for that municipal credit, too. That's You're really asking the board to approve that. You know, we haven't approved that the supervisor to sign, sign it. it. There right. you go. That's a good point. So, municipal credit. So we're going to move three items to approve. So they'll become C, D, and E under A or under approve. And we'll pull them out of receive and file, and they will be approve uh, maybe municipal credit and community credit contract for 2019 uh, application for approve application for Kearney strong grant and approve application for FEMA grant Put those under pending that goes under uh, new. consent agenda approve and it'll be oh, I see uh, C D and E And I don't know if you need to change the date on that. You signed it on September 21st, and it's not being approved till tonight, so. Add and ratify. <laughs> and Good ratify, point. okay. Okay, that's all I had. All right. Now, that's a good to ask the questions for. Uh, Consent agenda approval with modifications. I move to approve the consent agenda with mo as modified. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Uh, vote, please. Ms. Chenow? Yes. 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 Then yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> All right. Um, Announcements and information. Hazardous Waste Day is October 27th from 8 a.m. to noon. And anybody who wants to partake in that, the entrance will be off of Lone Tree Road only. Um, you will not be able to get in line if you come in uh, Watkins Boulevard. And uh, hopefully we're going to have the traffic lights uh, working for that day too. So normally they'd be off. Trick-or-treat hours are from 6 to 8 on October 31st, so you guys maintain those hours. Nothing later. I'll call your mom. I'll call your mom. Oh, maybe I won't. So general election is November 6th. Uh, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, the office will be closed on Monday, November 12th, on observance of Veterans Day. Okay, at this time we have public comment. Any public comment? Yes, sir, please stand up to the podium, state your name and address. Dennis Raymond, 6039 Fish Lake Road. As you know, at the last meeting, um, Tammy and Rick and Brian ran into the little room there and talked to the attorney about a letter that I received and I had written a response uh, which was drawn up by an attorney and uh, the attorney made some comments that uh, I had filed a defamation of character lawsuit which was not true you all received the copy from my attorney and I will read that to in order to clarify it <clears throat> I have discussed these statements with my attorney Dale he has informed me that by telling the Wilsons that I am unstable crazy and there were concerns about me shooting up the place these three trustees have com com committed nothing but defamation per se. They defamed me and published these statements to third parties. That being said, it is not my intent. So somebody ne needs to learn how to read. Not my intent. At this time to pursue any legal action against Hamill, Howe, and Flowers. However, consider this my formal request to get a written uh, uh, letter of an apology. Next meeting, if I don't get it, 
this is what's going to happen. I will reconsider the lawsuit in circuit court for no less than $25,000 each. You may not be able to use your attorneys because it was said after me, and I don't know, I'll verify that. But that is what my request is. So if you don't want to do it, I'll find out what my attorney does, does and we'll go to court. If anybody wants to read the letter, I thank uh, Nancy Brandstetter and the spinal column for putting my letter in the spinal column. There are some extra copies that I brought in if anybody wants to take a look at them. Thank you. Gary, question? All right. Either I don't know how to read or Mr. Raymond doesn't know how to listen. Oh, yeah. Well, I sat here and told you folks and the public acknowledging that the township had received notice of a claim that was going to be investigated and responded to. At no time did I suggest that a lawsuit had been filed. Maybe Mr. Raymond heard it that way. He was incorrect. And that and was beyond debate. You well, want to verify it, the video will do so. Well, Watch the video. The way, I, the way you said it. So between a claim and a lawsuit, I don't know. I'm not an attorney, but fine. If that's what you said, then I apologize. But that is not my intent right now. All right, what I just set up there will be my intent at the end of the next Board of Trustees meeting. I demand an apology. They defame me. And if I can call them names, I guess I can turn around and make up names for every one of them. You turned around and told my attorney when he called you that the biggest thing is I bombarded Mr. Hamill with emails and that I called him Ricky. That's what my attorney said when he called you. So I guess if they can call me unstable and crazy, I guess I can make up names for all of them. Gary? I can make up names for all of them. May I make a statement? No. Of course you may. I recommend against it. The gentleman is threatening uh, a lawsuit. There's nothing gained by any of the folks that that lawsuit is threatened against for making any public comments on the public record. Again, the matter has been uh, referred for an investigation. I understand that's uh, going to take place and a response uh, will be forthcoming. Whether it will happen according to Mr. Raymond's timeline or some other timeline, I can't comment on. And if he wants to he can file a lawsuit any time he wants. To me, easily rectified. All I want is a letter, written letter of an apology. Very simple. If those three can't do it, then it's the township's fault. If I win or lose in, in, in court, then they will, the township will find out how needless this lawsuit was by just not even making those comments about me, but just giving me a letter of apology and it'll all be dropped. But it's up to them. To I'm not going to put well, up with this crap anymore. So that's their choice, whatever they want. Be in the paper again, it'll be in my, in my coming up website or whatever. Okay. Just one Let's final say. observation. According to the letter that I read, the claim statements were made to two people. Two people that are apparently acquaintances and friends of Mr. Raymond. As a result of Mr. Raymond, he has published what he claims to have been said to the world, in effect. So you, know, you can stand and see who's making the bigger deal of the situation. Well, you know, they said it. It's a township. Let the people know how they are. They talk about people like that in the letter. I really don't care, OK? Next month, we'll talk about bids, and I'll show you problems with that. So you want to keep going? I got 17 more comments to keep going, a lot more. 17 more articles in writing by the paper, emails, documents, or videos, okay? My stuff is true. It's not false. So I don't care. I got 17 more articles. Okay. That I received from you. Enough, okay. please. You've I'm done. had more than your three minutes. Thank you. I don't know why I said thank you, but uh, it will I can't come. Hear you. Okay. No yeah. comment. Okay, we're moving on. Any more public comment? Uh, any more public comment? Okay. All right. Next item is uh, pending business. Um, the first one is water system operation and maintenance agreement. Um, 
surprised the Water Resource Commission hasn't shown up tonight, but uh, I don't see them out there anywhere. Nope. Gary? Uh, you have in your packets uh, two resolutions. Oh, I provided revised resolutions, uh, one as recently as this morning, and those would be the resolutions I'd recommend you use in the event you're applied to approve this. One of those resolutions approves the transfer of the assets uh, from the County Water Resources Commission to the Township. It uh, authorizes the supervisor to uh, accept quick claim deeds, sign any other documents to effectuate that transfer. The second resolution approves an operation and maintenance agreement uh, whereby Water Resources Commission for the county would operate and maintain the water system. Our office has reviewed that agreement. I identified one change uh, which I provided notice of the right copies if you like. I brought them, but basically the county uh, exhibit B said they were going to follow the Miss Dig statute, but they were referring to a version that has since been replaced. That's been corrected. So we're fine with the, the document. Uh, exhibit C of that operation of maintenance agreement outlines the kinds of things that the county may charge as overhead costs. If you looked at that, if you have any questions, that's where someone from Water Resources being here to answer them might be helpful. But as far as the legal end of it goes, it's clean. All right. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions on that? Just to explain, you know, for the sake of people in the audience, too, what are the options? We can approve it or we cannot approve it, and then what are the consequences of that? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> if you recall, when uh, Mr. Prince was here in the summer, uh, what he pointed out was that, however it may have happened, the title to some of these water system assets was in the name of the county when our ordinance suggests that they're supposed to be in the, the township's name. And that, that's where this, you know, devolved from. They wanted to, to clean things up, if you will. The agreement is uh, patterned after <coughs> ones that we've negotiated with their office or some of our other communities. The notable change was on the insurance provisions, and I don't know if you've had a chance to look at those, but uh, the county has finally agreed to if they can, and they understand they actually have secured liability insurance under a pooled coverage. And so you have uh, some insurance available if there were, for instance, to be a, maybe a water backup claim or some such thing that resulted in liability. There's some insurance there that's going to cover that. The township is free to get its own liability insurance if it wants. And there is a downside to that, although the, the coverage amounts are in the millions it's a pool of coverage, so if some other community had a huge claim that chewed up the insurance, uh, the county's not promising to, to make up the difference if you then have a claim. But it's a big improvement over the way they have been operating in the past. Thank uh, you. I, you know, I can answer questions on any particular provisions you have. It's, it's a pretty standard form contract that comes out of the county, uh, whether it's a corporation council's office or in this case, the Water Resources Commission. Essentially, everything still functions the same. Right. The difference is who the assets yeah, gonna, are. You're, you're, gonna, you're still going to set your water and sewer rates, or water rates at least, uh, and they're going to take care of the billing and the collections and, and, and everything else. So they're going to run the system for you. And they do send us quarterly updates on financials. So we have those yeah, too. I believe I saw that in there. I, ha I have it. Here, if anybody wants to look at it. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? And how about we uh, somebody make a motion to approve? Um, we'll start with resolution 18 33. I would move to approve resolution 18 33 to approve the water system operation and maintenance agreement with Oakland County. Support. Moved and supported. Vote, please. Mrs. Coker? Yes. 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 Motion carries. 
I move to approve resolution 18-34, the acceptance of the Highland Township water system assets. Support. Good moved and supported. Vote please. I vote yes. 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 Motion carries. And those resolutions are the ones that I provided today. Okay. Yes. And then the maintenance agreement has to be approved separately as well, right? You you just approved it. But that was part of that was the attachment to thirty four. That was part of eighteen thirty three. Thirty three. Yeah. Okay. Agreement. The, the agreement would be attached to the resolution. Yep. Substituting okay. the, that one page with the correction to the mistake statute. Okay. Right. The uh, next item is uh, pending business B Intergovernmental Transportation Service Agreement. Um, before we get into this one, um, we have a, a little bit of a question about the budget amendment. Kim, I think what we want to do is we want to do that budget amendment at the budget meeting, and there's a reason for that. So we're going to do the agreement part, but we'll go to Wall Lake tonight, and then we'll pick up that other part on the budget meeting. So. Uh, we're going to cross out plus budget amendment, and so this will be to approve the, uh, we've done this once, um, and it turned out that um, there were some things that SMART was kind of a little bit concerned about. So we modified the um, agreement so that what happens is we are basically uh, contracting with Wall Lake to manage their program. So we will take on their employees, but they keep their bus, they keep the SMART credits, uh, and uh, the uh, money they get from SMART, we build Wall Lake, they build, build SMART, and then they pay us for the, for the process. So and it should be a instantaneous, well, instantaneous in terms of how fast SMART responds, but uh, there won't be a time, it shouldn't be a time lag between SMART's payment uh, and our request. So because of the way it's set up to, to work. So <clears throat> on that note. Um, if we're doing this other agreement with all the other communities, why are we doing this now? And because when is the other one, when are we looking at entering that other contract? We're not 100% sure. We, first, we've got to get all the, all the other communities to agree to move forward. That's, a, that's part of the discussion <laughs> thing later. And uh, once we get that, then we can then take it to the next step in that part. And this is something that we started before that process. And it's an agreement that we, uh, it's what we agreed to with Wall Lake to work with them on this. So at a later point, then um, depending on how they want to go along with it, they can either agree to come into the authority or stay on their own as an independent. In uh, which case we would no longer be their contractor. This so. contract says it goes through June 2020. Is that when you think this other program is going to be in place? Um, no, but uh, we could probably, I think mean, we could do that. I mean, Gary, you read that. There shouldn't be any issue with that. We could still this manage it. can be terminated without cause on 90 days written notice, notice. by either party. You reviewed this whole. Yes. I've looked at this while the contract has revised. I've worked through a few things with him on it. I'm comfortable with it as it's presented to you tonight. The, uh, it, it calls for a set amount of payment to be made through the reimbursement process that's you know, described in Section 3C. I, I wasn't part of the discussions in terms of what was wrong with the version that you included back in June basically to provide the same services, but I don't think Walt Lake wanted to have it you know, read as it did there, or it was a total turnover. They didn't want what? Well, for instance, uh, the prior agreement had the uh, buses that are used by Walt Lake uh, to be turned over to Highland. That's not provided here. They, they will remain as Walt Lake buses. So we can use them for this, or we can't use them for this? 
so they, they will be used as part of the program. Oh. But it's my understanding that SMART has some issues with, Smart. with things, and, yes. and those are ironed out here. Uh, but I was not involved in those discussions, so I can't be very informative on that tonight. Only, um, I'm sorry, were you married to search? Were you done? Here? Were you done? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, on page four, and I don't know which, that might not even be the same one on this one. This is from home, I was, and I printed it out. About the independent contractor, number yes. seven. Yeah. I just was concerned with, and I think we've already done this though, right? We've taken on their employees, and we're being held responsible for all workers' compensation and other insurance, income tax, social security, and with holding and all their compensation or benefits. That'll that's be part of the correct. That's part of the budget, and that's right. Yeah. And they'll be reimbursing us for that okay. entire amount. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks, Kim. All right. Any other questions? Uh, so entertain a motion. I would move to approve the intergovernmental transfer of transportation dispatch driver scheduling and call center services agreement with Wild Lake. Support. Okay, moved and supported. The vote, please. Mr. Savian. Yes. No. Yes. 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 And yes. Motion carries. Is that effective? November um, 1st, active as soon as the last person signs it. So November, not before November 1st. It's um, going to Wild Lake's board next. October yeah. 16th, did I yes. read? It does not provide for an effective date of November 1, as it's done to tonight. It provides for it to take effect to the, on the last date. So if Wild Lake approves it next week and signs it, it's in effect. So we you signed up already. Okay. So for some reason you wanted to uh, have the effective date deferred, I suppose you could hold off on signing it until <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer to see it signed now and make it move forward. You may want to um, chat with Amy about what works best for payroll purposes of when to begin them on our payroll. Yep. Did you do that? That it really didn't matter because if we started after they, I mean, if we started on the first, it's going to be in the middle of the pay period, anyways. We just don't want them starting like there's just a few days right around the pay period beginning and end where it would not be ideal, right? So, so if it if they did sign it on the 16th and it started on the 17th, it would be at the beginning of a pay period, it would be four days into a, a pay period. That would be fine, but let's have that conversation is all I'm saying. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to the next item. Um, I see some people here waiting for this one. <laughs> Sorry that we put you through a delay on this. Um, the next item is um, the resolution 18-31 proceed with Peninsula Lake Special Assessment District for control of weeds in Peninsula Lake and related services pursuant to 1954 PA Act 28 it was amended. So we hammered this pretty hard at the last meeting and um, Judy you did get those additional names I put on your desk. Did you this afternoon? Yeah they were there at the end of the day. Well, there's three more names to go on. Oh, and as a result, um, you've been passed out a map uh, of those that are accepting and uh, those that don't want to. And the way it works out is uh, the total district is 24 parcels, 51 acres. Um, 15 parcels are yes, equal to 38 acres, which is 75%. So it went up from 65 or 68 percent. What did you have? 60 something. Anyways, it went up from 60 something to 75 percent. Uh, so there's over 70 percent. Uh, I think that's a, a fair statement. Um, that uh, you did your job uh, knocking doors. Um, so on that, 
I'll make the motion to. Mr. Hamill? Yes. Just briefly, uh, did the board get provided a revised resolution from what was posted on the original the agenda? The last thing you sent. What I sent yesterday or Monday? Yeah, it was emailed out. Is that the one that's on the table here? Uh, yep, it's also at the table. And what is the date in paragraph five? October 18th. And then the uh, date in paragraph six? November 14th. Thank you. We got the correct copy? Okay. You change the dates and if you've got what I sent on Monday, then you're good. On this right. map, where are the brown ones? Are those the new ones? That's yeah. I think They're those are the no votes. The no votes. Where the yellow then? Couldn't get an answer. And the greens are the yeses. Yep. And that was, I was told with nor multiple door knocks and unable to get the property owner to answer. So, all right, so I believe I made the motion. So, I'll so support. moved and supported. Vote, please. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. 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 Motion carries. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for uh, okay. your persistence. Thanks, and sorry we put you back on that one but <clears throat> all right if you guys don't want to hang around you can uh, leave I know some of you have sped up to get here so you might want to get dinner Thank you. you're welcome very much okay new business number nine um, Tammy you want to do this proposal to place legal ads in the spinal column news weekly so while well, the letter's pretty self-explanatory, um, Milford has switched over to using Spinal Column for their ads and they've been happy with that situation. Spinal Column has the added benefit of placing the legal ads on the website so anyone who wants to check the legal ads can do so for free without subscribing to the paper. And uh, it's their prices are Quite a savings for Milford Times, and I'm not really convinced we have a lot of Milford Times readers in Highland any longer. Right. I don't, I don't think there's many Milford Times readers anyway. Since they've really changed their format, I know many people like myself just I don't get it anymore. It's just really sad because it was, it was a great paper. It's great. Now there's nothing in there. It's Milford or Highland. So I wonder how many people are. I agree with you on that one. Sorry, Mary. Oh, that's okay. It's my understanding that we have to have it in a weekly paper, though. And this, the spinal column that Heinle gives is a monthly paper. And so I would ask the attorney to put his opinion on that. You know, I don't believe that qualifies us to use that paper if it's not a weekly paper. But it, That's, I mean, the statutes that I used to go by, as clerk said, they ha it had to be a weekly newspaper. I, it is published every week. But the Highland edition is not, not every Highland resident gets that edition every week. But there is no Milford edition, and Milford sees fit to... Uh, well, then you publish. could use the Oakland Press or Detroit News or whatever. I mean, I'm just going by what the legal standards are, and my understanding is it's... It qualifies weekly. as a weekly paper. Uh, weekly is not my recollection. I, mean, I, I didn't come prepared to answer that question, which is an easy answer in the, from the statutes, but... My recollection is the general requirement when you're talking about newspapers being used for legal notices, it has to be a newspaper of general circulation in the area in question. So if the spinal column is a newspaper of general circulation in Highland Township, and I understand that to be the case, it would satisfy that standard. It would not be that big of a deal to check to see if there are any frequency publication requirements such as Mary's mentioning. And I would not be able to do that until next week. May I address that? Yes, sir. Name and the phone number. My name is Jim Stevenson. I'm a publisher and owner of the Spinal Column News Weekly. Um, one of the, um, and this is a state statute, you ask a very good question, Mary. Um, the, the 
state statute is exactly um, the way your attorney has um, uh, stated it. However, in, and I, I did not bring this with me tonight, um, and, um, but the statute also indicates that if the paper that you choose distributes in that particular area, in this case Highland Township, during a, on a weekly basis, we have hundreds of papers that we put in Highland Township each week whether it's Mahar Feed, whether it's here, whether it's at the Walgreens, at other stores throughout the township, that qualifies that we distribute our newspaper in Highland Township. And I can tell you matter-of-factly that the Oakland Press has far less copies on a um, weekly basis in Highland Township anymore than the spinal column puts out in single copies. Um, how do I know that? I'm a member on the board of directors of the Michigan Press Association and everybody has to report their numbers on an annual basis as, as members. Um, this um, uh, issue uh, was clarified to Milford Township, uh, the village of Milford, to Wald Lake, to Wolverine Lake, um, to White Lake and they are very pleased uh, with the um, results with our service and are very comfortable even through their legal counsel um, based on the Michigan statute that because we distribute in those various areas um, and White Lake for instance we go through just at Kroger's alone we go through 500 papers a week just at the newsstand. So but that's published weekly there. No, no it isn't. No, it is not. Um, we publish into, um, we mail to Commerce, Wald Lake, Wixom, Wolverine Lake, the first and third Wednesdays of every month. We publish to Highland, the second, and whenever there is a fifth Wednesday, to Highland Township, and on the fourth Wednesday to White Lake Township. However, our 2,000 plus store single copy locations are exactly the same every single week regardless of where we um, mail to in that particular week. Does okay. that answer your question, Mary? Jim, I have, uh, I, I pulled it up here. That. I know there are specific requirements for advertising for our planning commission, public hearings, and zoning board of appeals, and that's what I'm referring to. I believe one of them reads it has to be a weekly circulation. You know, and I would defer to the attorney to answer that question whether this complies with that or not. The other issue I have with this paper, when, when you first decided to do this, you weren't going to cover Highland at all, you went to Rick had conversations, and Rick presented to the board, at least it was my recollection, that he had some involvement in keeping it here. And I don't, I don't know what that was, but it, it makes me a little nervous if he, if he has any control over what is published in that paper. He has no, I can assure you, he has no control over what we publish as a private entity. Not even letters to the editor? Those letters to the editor that we decide to publish or not publish are a business decision that Allie Armstrong, myself, and Nancy Brandstatter as a member of our news and, and management of our content make. Um, so you no never let Rick decide whether one goes in? No, or? that has never been the case and will not be the case. I've had um, the similar question asked me of uh, township supervisors in other municipalities. Um, almost, I can't remember one that I haven't been asked over uh, well, it's an five important years. Question. Yeah, it is, a, it is an important question. Um, many, I shouldn't say many, but on a regular basis, um, several times a year, I get asked or the comment comes to me from people, well, you're a government entity, right? 
No, we are not a government entity. I am a um, single LLC. I own 100% of it. It is a private individual business. Whether a edition of my newspaper exists or not is um, based solely 100% on advertising. Um, our business model is that advertising supports how many pages we have in any given week. Um, the advertising um, employs my writers, my editors, the printing, the postage, maybe even occasionally an extra nickel for me. Um, but uh, I guess in, to come full circle, Mary, in answer to your question, no, no um, elected official has any say so in terms of what we decide to publish. That is totally our decision internally. And I've had the question in other cases, and I can assure you that is the case. And I'll second that, and I find extreme offense to the insinu insuation. It was your words when we Not first my heard words. the proposal, Rick. So that's all I'm bringing up. Your accusation. Nice question. Right. And I want to make sure that there is no, no connection because, you know, this is... If it's I think you a should free stop press, now. it's a free press. Yeah, it's a well, free you press. Stop you then, and I'll stop, so... Make a comment. I yes. Say, extra question. I said I said a comment. I want to make a comment. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh no, sorry. The the question I had. Um, now we talk about when we put this notice in. If we do the, use the spinal column and put the notice in, it comes out the one time for the week. Does it go again in um, the one that goes like to White Lake too, or does it only go in the Highland area? No, Just, it would go if you're placing. And let's. Uh, uh, good question, Mary. If, um, for instance, you would place your your a public notice the first week of the month, the first Wednesday of the month, where we mail distribute to Commerce in the Wald Lake area. Okay? That will be in that, your public notice will be in that edition, but that edition is also distributed in Highland Township to our various single copy locations and to those people that subscribe that live in Highland Township. Uh, we have a increasing base of people that subscribe that want to have it every single week because they love it, um, then you can subscribe to it and get your copy. People don't want to have to drive um, for a little over $2 a week. They spend more on a cup of coffee on <laughs> than that. Um, so that's that's a growing aspect. But no, your ad will appear each, each week. It also appears on our website and the Michigan Press Association, in conjunction with its members, um, and most importantly, the Michigan legislature, will have um, a targeted launch of January 1st, um, a statewide website that Spinal Column will have a link to um, and put on our website both on our front page and on the public notice um, page that will allow people to search any public notice by any municipality anywhere in the state of Michigan that is published. Um, the Oregon's Michigan Press Association has worked diligently with both sides um, uh, of the aisle in uh, Lansing to get this accomplished. And it's a very, very complicated process as you can understand there's many many places up north and in the UP that it is haphazard at best um, all the connections and everything and, and I think that's why it has been so hard to change that because even when I was in office's clerk they talked about changing it so you could put it on the website only or you know but it's just not available to everybody yet right. to do that and we have um, I can I can say standing here because it Jerry. has been given to me. Um, is that the I, I don't have my I can't read it. That's for Gary. Oh, that's okay. the statute. Um, that everybody has been very that we deal with from the village to to Milford Township to the uh, to Terry Lilly at White Lake has been very pleased um, with the approach 
the savings they have had from uh, hmm? from prior Sorry. publications. Well, and I think it's it, it is, but my concern is, are we being legal with this? You know, when we publish, as there's, you know, you have to have it 15 days before the meeting date. You know, are we going to be able to meet that with the the way once a month? Well, advertising based on each week that we publish, because we publish each week and we distribute in each township and municipality each week, um, the governmental clerks, or the clerks for those uh, municipalities and, and townships, have um, just become very used to, so let's say it's 15 days and there's a planning meeting and it happens to be on, a, or a zoning meeting and it happens to be on a Tuesday, and it has to be 15 days in advance. Um, Everyone seems like it's, it's, there's some consistencies, but as you know, as clerk, there can be some very strange, the length of time, and does it have to publish once, or does it have to publish twice? Um, they've really um, been able to judge that internally, and have been able to backdate, and then they send us a note that says it has to be in both times. Um, we provide both a, a printed copy um, and a electronic copy along with an affidavit for every single one and you can go on our website and on spinalcolumnonline.com and see the legal notices that are there. Okay, there and the savings is approximately 20 percent on an average right now. So in the case of, I'll just use this as a case of Milford Township, they saved literally $2,500 right off the bat, okay? And that'll be more this year because of all the election stuff you have to publish and those types of things. So, you know, $2,500, they said the point, that Mr. Green made the comment, you know, we can use that for something, something else. So. Does that answer the question, Gary? Actually, there's another document here that is produced by um, the Michigan Press Organization, and it goes type of notice. Publication of ordinance to create a municipal housing commission in a newspaper of a general circulation in the city, village, township, and if more, if none exists, then a newspaper having general circulation in the county in which the city, village, or township is situated. Notice of a hearing to terminate rights to, of an owner, of a burial space in a newspaper of general circulation in the county in which the cemetery is located. Notice of hearing to vacate, discontinue or abolish a city street park, one of the new newspapers of the city. Uh, notice of adjustments of debts of municipality, two newspapers, at least one newspaper of general circulation published within the district of the city uh, uh, in which the case commenced and such other newspaper having a general circulation among dealers and bondholders as the court designates note, district lightly re likely refers to federal bankruptcy district in Michigan. Uh, publication of detailed financial reports by the city treasurer, one of the newspapers of the city. Notice to taxpayers of the city treasurer that the ward tax rolls have been delivered, one or more of the newspapers of the city. Notice of meeting the board of review, one or more of the papers of the said city. So. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, what I saw on the screen was from the revised Judicature Act that was referencing newspapers as applicable to courts and uh, some other purposes. I am not going to be able to provide it. If, if the board wants an opinion on whether the spinal column will satisfy the township's needs for legal publications, I apologize, but I will not be able to give you that this evening. I don't know what the proposed timeline is for this proposal uh, going into effect wanted to act on it subject to a legal opinion that it's legal, that would be one option. I can, and I could be happy to provide that state statute for everybody. I can provide, my apologies, I should have brought it here tonight. I did not, um, but I'd be happy to, I have provided that to every clerk in the other municipalities. I'd be happy to give you a copy. Thank you. Well, I don't have a problem finding the law. I just don't have it with me, and I, I'm not going to do legal research in the middle of a meeting. That's not how I would how I would do that. Well, there's right. two ways to do it. We could postpone the, I mean, but, the uh, question, if, or if we if can vote on it. If another charter township has uh, 
had their attorney look at this and signed off on it, and that information can be sent on to me. That saves a lot of time, unless I don't instruct the attorney. But that's <laughs> and they and they have, trust me. All right. So apologies, but didn't know this one was the uh, initials. Just want to make a yeah. comment. Well, my, my history of the spinal column goes back a long way. I was playing high school sports. I used to have my picture in the paper periodically, which was very nice. Back when the paper was pretty thick. It used to be over in Union Lake. And, yeah, before I owned yeah, it. Yeah, my wife, Mr. Fancy, owned it. My wife worked for them for quite a while. And I just, and then my neighbor, Kenny Lowe, used to deliver them in his red wagon around the neighborhood. And he used to have delivery boys that delivered the papers way back in the east, drop them off at his house. And I just remember going way back. But I just want to say thank you for being in our community. First of all, I remember when you came, it was a big deal. And I, I apologize. I didn't realize that you're producing papers every week. I didn't. I didn't realize you're doing them at the, at the at the stores. And I think that's pretty cool. I did. I just thought it was. Honestly, I thought we were getting it once a month in Highland. And I thought that was it because I no, didn't get it once a month in Highland. I didn't realize. Can, well, I can tell. Obviously, I need to do a better job of that. Well, I'm um, not paying attention. I'm not blaming you. Maybe it's just no. me. But Mike and Deb go through a whole stack every single week that uh, we bring over to the feed store. Right. And. Uh, People will come and pick up a copy and and. Uh, My point uh, is, I'm very impressed. I just didn't realize you're doing that. I didn't realize I I sort of have you more of just once a month if you're staying in business. Right. But that's that's very good. So I'm just well, glad you're here in Highlands. But, well, you ask, and all these questions are good. On the weeks where we mail to a particular community, the news content, both print and online, primarily focuses on that community. But you will see, but we have taken many things, and I don't know if Nancy can verify this, we'll take something, that a story that was about Highland, and run it in the week that White Lake paper is mailed. Because it's a relevance to those people. It may not necessarily just be a Highland issue. And consequently, and I don't know if there's any in this week's paper, but there may be an issue someplace else that is of interest to Highland residents. So that's the that's the give and take and the value of that. We are getting ready to start a, uh, a Milford edition um, that'll actually come out on the same week of the Highland edition. Um, we were approached by business leaders and by the Huron Valley Chamber of Commerce to please start. It really is all dependent on advertising revenue and whether businesses are willing to step up in the schools and, the, and all of those other entities. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll do it, but I'm going to wait to pull that trigger till next Friday. Um, but there is, needless to say, there's um, the community wants it pretty bad. And I, I take that as an immense compliment. And uh, um, matter of fact, what I will do is I will make sure, and I've done this with one other township board, I will make sure that each of you get a copy of the spinal column each week delivered to your home so that you can just stay on top of whatever is going on in other communities if you don't get to our website during the week. I will make sure that that happens at no charge to you. Well, I don't have to do a lot of things, but um, I'm going to do that. Hey, Jim, do you have a copy of today's paper handy? I don't know if there's one back there. If you open today's Highland edition of the newspaper, you'll see the notice of election from Milford, White Lake, uh, I'm pretty sure Commerce, or one of the yes. other ones. I think there's three three notice of elections from other communities that are advertised in the Highland Spinal Column. And other communities understand that this is not a problem. No, they don't. And they they find it works even better because they say the service from Lynn Donahue, I don't really have anything to do with it. I have way too much on my plate to begin with. Um, she's the person that, that um, serves um, and handles all of the municipalities. And uh, I get nice comments from those people. and. Even when Lynn is not in the office and she works from home on Monday and Fridays, um, we are, unless I get it on Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock, um, and our deadlines are typically on Thursday at 5, but even if I got it on a Monday morning at 9 o'clock, I don't 
you didn't hear that. Um, I can probably still get it in for you. Uh, we put together the paper um, on Monday, beginning probably at 9 or 10 o'clock, um, and I can always make something happen. I know the owner. And it has <laughs> happened. I've had, uh, recently we had Wolverine Lake call on Monday morning and, the, and just like they were in a panic. We forgot, we got to get this in, da da da, can you get it in? We got it in for them. Okay. So I hope that answers your questions. Anybody else? Brian, good question. Mary? As long as it's legal, I don't care. You know, that's my, my main concern is that we're meeting the statutes of publication requirements for the township. And, and, and I understand that. And uh, uh, you asked the same questions that the other townships have, and they vetted it very, very carefully. And I apologize for not bringing that statute. Shame on me for not bringing it. But thank well, you. Well, we'll postpone this until the next. Well, we could we want. move forward we with move it? Forward, yeah. And then um, Make a motion. if Gary finds trouble with it, we can review it and consider revising the state of policy at that point if he does find any trouble with it. Well, what I'd like to do is what Gary suggested. If, if you know someone that can give an attorney that can already tell Gary that so he doesn't have to spend all the time researching it. Is I can. I'll be happy. We're, we're not talking was, about an extensive research project. But right. You just I want. Just, I would be you? happy to have um, Robin Luce Herman, who is a um, partner with Butsel Long in Birmingham, um, call you first thing in the morning, and um, uh, be happy to uh, have her talk to you and, and explain and show you exactly where it is in the right, we're, we're next Wednesday but I'm happy I'm happy to have Robin uh, save some those. time save Gary's yeah, time just, I'll just clear it, come on. okay right. is that also oh, Gary suggested approving it subject to it being legal as far as he's concerned correct I just found the open meetings act basically it says uh, Publish notice of the regular scheduled meetings within 10 days of the first meeting of each calendar of fiscal year. So that's regarding open meetings. There's a whole bunch of yeah, departments and all over. Yeah. Well, I just looked at this one. So Recommendation, so question, Gary. Question for Tammy. Do you know, as we sit here, if you've got any imminent things that have to be published? We have an ad that's going to be placed tomorrow if we can approve this tonight. Times. Which will get nowhere. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Well, what's the worst case? We print it twice. And pay for well, it. Well, that's twice. a lot of money. Ads are not cheap. I would like to make a motion that we approve this uh, spinal column as the paper of record. And um, if Gary finds any legal concerns, then we'll bring it back to the board for reconsideration. I'll support that. Can you, is, do I need to word it differently? <clears throat> what is going to get published tomorrow? The notice of election. And your deadline to publish that is when? It's got to be placed tomorrow, one way or the other. We got time, Gary. You tell me what to pull up. We'll put it on the screen and make it happen. Why? Not trying to do research tonight, but I'll try in the morning. I don't know. I feel comfortable. There was enough evidence in another document that I went through that made the same statement you did and verifies what the newspaper says. So I don't have a problem. I go ahead with it. Okay. So I made a motion. I support it. Um, tell me, say that again. Tammy, so I would like to proceed with using spinal column as a paper of record and I'm not sure the right wording but to if Gary finds issues with it then we'll bring it back to the board for reconsideration. Okay. Gary's review. Okay. 
Well, and th that you have identified exactly what it is that needs to be published tomorrow narrows the research considerably with the Michigan election law. Okay. As opposed to a more general proposition under zoning notices and so forth. So that I can check in the morning and let you know. And I will follow up and provide those documents to, um, to Gary and, and for the follow up from Robin Lou said about so long, who represents uh, the legislature and the Michigan Press Association has dealt with it <coughs> dozens of times. So, so Gary, if so you if I hate to keep asking questions, but I'm going to until I'm satisfied. If it when will it show up in a paper? Next Wednesday. Next right. Wednesday. And that meets the statutory deadline. Correct. And that is the statutory deadline. I don't know, but it's either going to be our options are next Wednesday's final column or next Thursday's Milford Times. Those are the two options we have. And either way, it's got to be placed tomorrow. Deadlines tomorrow for both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I got it. Okay. So we'll hold off until the afternoon. We need to vote tonight. Right. We're ready to vote. Okay, there's a motion. Uh, second uh, vote, please. Mr. Howe? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. Have our confidence, and if I can thank give you. any help, uh, let Excellent. me know, and I'll provide those documents uh, to Gary, and thank you. All right, next item, uh, B, approved contract to install a fence at West Highland Cemetery. Um, I think I explained in the uh, memorandum uh, pretty clearly what went on. Um, I did research in advance to try and get pricing. Um, it fell, all of the pricing I got fell under 10000 I went with the get three quotes. I sent out the quotes um, to multiple suppliers. These are the three that uh, responded and Novi Fence uh, flat out refused to quote the, the information I requested. Um, so South Lion Fence uh, was $9,783.92. Milford Fence was $9,789. Uh, Novi Fence, 14000 They're way off the mark. Um, South Lion Fence can't install till next year, and so my recommendation is Milford Fence has said they can get going on it as soon as possible, have it done before snow flies. Uh, this is a chain link fence that goes along the south and east border of the West Highland Cemetery. It's in black, uh, so it doesn't stand out. It should look very nice in there, and uh, it will be a bunch of improvement over the uh, farm fence that was in. Uh, barbed wire that was there before. Uh, it would be nice to get that closed off this year. So, I would move to approve the supervisor to sign a contract with Milford Fence for the installation of a black vinyl coated chain link fence 48 inches in height to enclose the south and east boundaries of the West Highland Cemetery <coughs> with a total length of approximately 830 linear, linear feet. feet in the amount of $9,789. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Uh, vote, please. Mrs. Chenoweth? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Okay, the next item um, resolution opposing Senate Bill 637 and Senate Bill 894. There was a little glitch in the uh, typewriter on the agenda. Uh, Gary, it's in an email which I attached here so it was easier than me rewriting uh, or reinterpreting what Gary had to say about it. Um, I also supplied, uh, put on your uh, the desk a letter I got this morning from uh, the Oakland County Economic Business Roundtable, and it uh, was from Oakland County RCOC, uh, made a statement at this round table this morning about what effect it will have on the road commission. Um, what this essentially does is it takes away the ability for the 
governmental, uh, correct me if I get something out of whack here, here that you might think is going to, it takes away the, the governmental agency's ability to be able to produce a revenue stream off of uh, fees for um, permits and that type of thing so that they can pay for some of the improvements in that that occur in the road right away. Uh, for instance, um, most of the money that they get for uh, upgrading uh, street light or stop lights and ADA intersections and that type of thing uh, that they use comes from these types of fees. And uh, if you remember uh, the Safe Routes to School, the cost of the intersection of Milford Road was a huge amount of money. I think it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars just for the ADA components. So it's a uh, that number needs to be verified, but it's a number that's equivalent to that. Well, if you take that and spread it over the entire state, um, it's a huge amount of revenue that uh, is generated that is necessary for a lot of communities. So it's kind of like what they want to do is they want to take that out of the uh, uh, communities and the local government's hands and throw it into a case where basically your cell uh, operators can go to the county and say, we want to use this pole, that pole, and that pole, and we'll give you $20. And that's their rent. Um, it doesn't in any way pay for the, the effects that it has in terms of grabbing the electricity from their pole. You know, it, it just goes on and on and on. So um, in this letter that I handed out, you can see that it's um, the uh, chief executive of Wayne County Warren Evans and L. Brooks Patterson, and it's their letter to the members of the Energy Policy Committee and the Michigan House of Representatives um, to <coughs> state their opposition to the uh, State Senate Bill 637. They did not do 894. And 894 is a very similar bill, right, Gary? Is that the? I just put it together, if I may. Sure. 2002, the legislature gave us the Metro Act. That's the state law that says telecom companies can run wire and road rights of way. You have to give them a permit unless you have a really good reason not to. And it caps the fees that they have to pay for that privilege. They pay the fees to the state, <coughs> and the state distributes those fees. That act doesn't deal with the subject of these pieces of legislation, which are is the new technology where telecom companies want to hang antennas on utility poles in the road right of way. For whatever reason, those are not considered telecom facilities. And what this legislation does is it basically says that municipalities have to give permits to allow for that, not only on existing but for the placement of new poles. And the legislation really limits what a municipality may do when it's acting on a permit request. And the other side of it is on the revenue side, where the fees that may be charged by municipalities for the permission to use the municipality's right of way by these private profit making enterprises are severely restricted. That, those are the two, you know, I'm trying to sum them up real quickly. 894 says that municipal right of way regulations are now going to be subject to the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. That's never been specifically provided for. So that's kind of a lesser part of it, but quite significant. Uh, because in 2012, the legislature did a major rewrite of the Zoning Enabling Act to severely restrict municipalities' rights when it comes to wireless. So you put it all together, and it's very uh, anti-local government, whether it's at the township, city, village level, or at the county road commission level. It is not surprising that there is opposition. Senate Bill 637 was introduced late last year, and it looked even worse at that time. Uh, the Michigan Township Association and Michigan Municipal League negotiated some revisions to the point where both of those organizations took a neutral position. 
and that's the position they maintain. They don't support the legislation, but most significantly, they don't oppose it. The only organized group that I know of that has actively opposed it is a group called PROTEC, and uh, you saw communications from their attorney, Michael Watsa, that I forwarded on to Rick. So I would recommend you adopt the resolution unless there's some reason you uh, want I, I, I've just read the uh, county executive's letters. I mean, it, it says it all. I mean, this is a very, very profitable uh, business, providing telecommunication services. And these companies do not need uh, these kind of price breaks to basically right. ins you know, use public property for their private commercial uh, generating activities. Well, there's no question that this technology needs to be deployed, but at whose expense? I think that's really what it amounts to, and you can tell I have some personal feelings about it, but... Um, well, to give a graphic so that you can just, understand... Just one of the couple things. Yeah. This thing blew through the state senate last March, and then it went on hold over the summer, but it, it got reactivated, and... Uh, they cleared this House committee, so the next stop will be on the House floor at some point, and that could happen fairly soon. So, yep. um, or you know, sometimes the legislature waits till after an election, and the people that are going to get out of Dodge will then vote on things in December. That's when we got the Metro Act. That's yep. when we got the Uniform Video Franchise Act. Um, so, <laughs> well, to give everybody a graphic of what you would expect from this. These units that they're talking about are uh, very frequently placed uh, antennas of high frequency that have a control box the size of a large refrigerator. So not only would they use a pole or put in a new pole, but they'll put that unit next to it. And they can put that unit anywhere they want in the right-of-way. So if it's in front of your house, in front of your yard, you're going to be looking at it whether you want to or not. It doesn't give us any ability to be able to have, say, hey, could you move it to the corner of the lot? Or could you, we have no control. It's like taken away from us. So imagine this in neighborhoods as well because it could, they need to be located in a frequent um, and sort of a pattern, so they'll do what they need to do to, to make it happen. And, and when you start thinking about, wow, a refrigerator stuck in the front of my yard uh, is not a very pretty sight and uh, could be a pull. What's been done regarding the effect of transmission, you know, that, that much frequency is going around in, in neighborhoods and communities because that, that has an effect on people too. Yeah, we're already getting all that. Well, I mean, but yeah. that's just adding, adding another layer. Yeah. Well, what they'll do is they'll abandon the old stuff eventually and then go to the new. But we don't know what it'll do. The uh, Federal Telecommunications Act that governs cellular towers basically legislatively said that municipalities may not regulate cell towers based on health effects. Wow. That's a long time ago. They are still raised when cell tower requests come into different communities. You know, folks will come out and speak to the health effects, but a municipality's ability to say no based on those is non existent. Right, so. Uh, I would move to approve resolution 18 35 opposing Senate bills 637 and 894. Support. Support. Okay, move to support it. Vote, please. Mrs. Cooper? Yes. 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 Okay, um, next item is health care budget amendment. Um, which one of you two want to take this, Judy? This is due Tammy? to, um, we've had quite a few people uh, kind of racking up some medical bills. In the township and we have exposure for the high deductible portion of it and um, the amount we budgeted this year is not going to be sufficient so we're transferring some monies over to that line item out of some excess money in another line item 
I would move to approve the budget amendment concerning health care. Support. Move to support it. Vote, please. I vote yes. 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 Motion carries. All right. Next item, uh, transportation authority discussion. <clears throat> I put on your tables some documentation. Um, Gary, you've had some opportunity to look at, or maybe not to look at these uh, documents, uh, the transportation authority business plan. I quickly looked at the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I quickly looked at the and so anyways, the Intergovernmental Agreement um, is a copy of uh, North Oakland uh, Transportation Authority's um, Intergovernmental Agreement, and it's put there as an example. So what's been going on is we've been meeting with um, the communities that are listed on that Intergovernmental Agreement to look at what it's going to take to make, um, make this authority type thing happen. So. At this point, we've had two meetings with uh, all of the communities and representatives, including uh, some of the transportation directors uh, for each one of the communities. And what at first we thought might be some hesitation by some of the people that thought they might lose their job or whatever, uh, they're very much uh, interested about seeing if we can move forward with this. There's a very interesting component to this. Uh, many of you, uh, I hope you all realize that if the uh, RT, which was not going to be on this ballot, but will probably be in 2020, passes, there'll be a 1.5 mil millage that we'll have to levy. <clears throat> and uh, if we don't have some type of a bus program in place, uh, pretty good chance that uh, we'll be paying 1.5 mils for nothing. So the so idea. If we do have something in place, then we won't that that make us. That we won't no, pay. what happens is that 1.5 mil. What what we have in place right now is Highland. Right, but I mean, if we get the larger one. If we get the larger one in place, what happens is um, that creates two authorities that can work as a team together and very potentially eventually be a single authority. Oakland County has every time said no to this RTA. Um, we've all just agreed that we need to opt out RTA in the RTA if it vote if Wayne and Macomb County vote yes, it's in. Doesn't matter what we say. So if it's in, then there will be a millage levy. So the thought process is rather than having no transportation system in place, why don't we look at the making sure that there is something in place before this comes down and then what happens is at the same time Oakland County has been uh, they have um, their uh, economic development uh, their economic round business roundtable they've been doing uh, research into programs which way are we going to head you know how are we going to look at the uh, um, transportation moving forward and the, the thing is is that there would be money that would come back to Oakland County. Uh, so it could be 15 million, 19 million, we don't know the exact numbers, but somewhere in that number. If you had an authority or two, you now have the horsepower it takes to be able to say, that's where that money needs to go because you've covered those communities. So um, that what would happen there is now we at least have a lot of money to put towards a program or an authority that could then validate some of the 1.5 bills that each community is going to have to pay. If we don't do it, then we're going to be paying 1.5 mills and SMART might go under and we don't know what's going to happen, you might end up with no buses. So this morning, Kim and I went to um, the Transportation Committee meeting at the Business Roundtable and we gave a presentation and they are extremely on board with us. They, they were impressed that uh, we've taken this initiative to develop an authority and uh, we've got their backing. A, guy, a representative from the RTA was very impressed with it as well. Uh, so where we're at right now is 
when we left the last meeting, what we agreed to do was to go back to our boards and say, are you willing to move forward on looking at getting into this authority? And <clears throat> in essence, there is going to be a cost to each community. Um, we don't have an exact number, but it can be in the hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollar range potentially for three years is what we're looking to do with starting operation. That one hundred fifty thousand, let's use that number. Uh, component of it can be um, paid in credits, so you use your CB, CDBG, your municipal credits, so on and so forth. I think the calculation that we had was um, ninety-four thousand dollars is what would come out of a uh, general fund to do that. Now, I know that uh, in the past we've uh, everybody said, "Well, let's see if we can do." They all didn't want to do general fund um, in involvement, but um, we have a pretty good-sized group, um, including uh, the. Township of Milford, who's been coming to the meetings and is also interested in in uh, being a part of this, he just has to get his numbers in order. Um, so, uh, Commerce uh, had their meeting; they agreed to move forward. Uh, White Lake still has to have their meeting to move forward, and right now it looks like we've pretty much got a, a go ahead to uh, that the interest is there to to see what we can do next. The next event will be that we'll get together with, uh, provided everybody wants to do it, we'll have all the attorneys at the same meeting for the, the townships. Now we do have a potential issue with Gary working for both um, Waterford and Highland, but it would only be if there are certain issues of how we um, allocate resources between each community, I think is to put it. I can address that. So, um, in any event, then what will happen is there'll be a separate attorney from all the uh, communities that will be hired by the transportation authority, so that none of the communities have a conflict of interest and it keeps the authority on, on a separate basis. So what happened is to build the intergovernmental agreement and uh, look at it, we're going to see if we can beat the thing right out in one, nearly one session. Uh, hopefully all of the attorneys will have presented their comments and things on the uh, the center government contracted services so they can mark it up and say here we see this Gary you're really good at marking stuff up so uh, we know that we'll get some good stuff from you on that and uh, then at that meeting we'll sit down and that'll be presented to the t attorney for the uh, that will be hired for the authority um, <coughs> This attorney is already working for NOTA. They were, he was working for NOTA, and then he got hired on by a couple of the townships that are um, involved with NOTA, so it was a conflict of interest, so he had to back out. So he's no longer well, with go. NOTA authority, but he does have all the boilerplates. He's been working, he worked with NOTA since 2012, so he doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, we can just take it from where it is and move forward. And the other part is, all of the attorney fees will be paid for by the SEMCAI grant we got. So our attorney mm -hmm. will, and each will be paid for by that grant. Uh, so that's not, there's no out-of-pocket expense at this time on that. And at this point, we're not absolutely committing to the number, but we need to move forward to figure out what the real number is and to make sure that everybody is seeing the right the same picture so um, everybody we've been dealing with has been uh, it's been phenomenal with the amount of kudos that we've been getting for taking this on it's a it's a big big uh, opportunity and uh, it was very good to see the uh, economic development uh, you know the business roundtable because they were looking at how are we going to deal with this RTA when we move forward and this is a perfect opportunity. Um, it creates a door-to-door -door opportunity that none of the other systems actually even think about. And uh, so it's a, um, I used an example um, uh, earlier that was kind of like the telephone. When the telephone was invented, you had to go to the store to use it, you know, so there's one phone in town. Um, 
that's kind of the way the bus program is today. In order to get to it, you got to go walk into town, only it isn't happening here, uh, to get a bus to go to Detroit or something like that. So later on what happened is they built out the phone system and every home had a phone. Well, that's the door-to-door -door concept. Um, this gives us the opportunity to go door to door and door to bus stop to be able to extend the system anywhere in southeastern Michigan. And it's a connector that hasn't really been addressed and now they're looking at it and going, this is a model that we need to amplify. And so um, it's something that I think we, it's a good opportunity for these communities to be leaders in uh, making a, a step forward and actually having some say what happens when the RTA uh, gets voted on. And it may be a component where the RTA looks at it and says we need to rethink what we're doing and maybe address and put more monies towards this. So it's a door that we've opened and we've opened it pretty wide and uh, the other township supervisors are uh, very much on board. I mean they want to see these, they don't want the bus systems to go away. They don't want to have to disappoint the uh, citizens that have been using the bus. It absolutely is not a money maker. And I bet you can say it'll never be a money maker, but it has the opportunity to be uh, funded in, more, in a different format where it doesn't turn into just the communities doing it. It becomes a free and clear authority that has the opportunity to be able to fund itself. So um, that's what we're I think we're all kind of hoping, all of the supervisors are kind of in the same mode. It'd be nice to get it out there and free and clear, but you have to sometimes invest uh, to make things like that happen. So uh, what I need tonight is, um, and I wasn't sure how to say this, Gary, because what I need is some type of a, a uh, notice of intent to carry on with the uh, process. So what, what would your recommendation be? <coughs> Answer that after I say a few things. Sure. So I mentioned that I have looked at these, these documents, the business plan, and a proposed intergovernmental agreement. I will have comments on that. Uh, the biggest one is going to be that, as it's currently drafted, it says it's an agreement between the group of communities and this, I'll call it WOTA, West Oakland Transportation Authority, which is an entity that doesn't exist as we sit here. So my comment is going to be there needs to be an agreement between the communities to create the authority. Right. Whether and, and if that's done, it's my belief that that is the only thing that will be needed. It will, you know, such an agreement uh, will create the authority, set forth all the rules regarding how it's supposed to operate and what it's supposed to do, and that there are several different statutes. You know, if you recall when we were talking with the Milfords about transportation, I identified some of those for you, and that's the second thing. I didn't see which of the several Michigan laws this authority um, would be created under, and that's important. So as far as the legal agreement goes, I will have some, some comments on it. And in my view, unless and until an authority is created, each community needs to make sure its lawyers and hence its legislative body is good with the document. Now, can that task of taking input from the individual community's attorneys uh, be handled by an attorney that is not beholden to any of those communities? Certainly, but it, he's not an attorney for the authority because the authority doesn't exist. Getting to the fact that our office represents Waterford and Highland, <clears throat> as I noted in an email that I sent to Rick and the Waterford supervisor, I don't see any issues with looking at and putting input in on an agreement that creates an authority, but when it comes to the financing end of it, I've disclosed to both communities a, a, a potential conflict of interest. The business plan that I looked at uh, would call for the township to be the, the base for this to operate out of. It would call for the township's current transportation director to be the director of this program. And 
in effect all of the current township transportation expenditures would become expenditures of the authority as I read it. How it's funded, as I saw, was each community would pay their share based on population and ridership. And Waterford Township is a very populous township. And so I identified that and I made the disclosure. Having said that, so long as neither community expected me to be involved in negotiating the terms of the financial end of this deal, I don't see where I would have a problem representing both communities. But when this kind of a thing comes up under the attorney's code of responsibility, I need to make the disclosure to each community, and each community would need to consent to the dual representation. And that's kind of what I've tried to summarize for the board what I put in the email for Rick. So, getting back to your question, if the board is uh, inclined to have Highland Township proceed with exploring the creation of an authority, it could be something as simply as a motion to authorize the supervisor to continue to explore the creation of an authority as outlined at this evening's meeting, provided the Legal costs are paid from the SEMCOT grant, which I've already heard. I got that. That's that's. I I feel that that's what I was looking for was the right verbiage. I mean, so you know, you you've taken it this far. Does the board want you to take it any further? I, I've read the documents. So I, mean, I can tell the board if you haven't read the intergovernmental agreement, it does provide for a governing body and how the members of that governing body are appointed by the different communities. So it's a representative uh, group. <coughs> the statute that uh, everyone agrees that it should be set up under will define you know, what the, the powers and, and authority and responsibilities of the authority are. I can't uh, tell you tonight what those would be. Uh, I think it's Act 196 of 1986 no. is what they were. What's that? Act 196 of 1986. I did not find any reference in the intergovernmental agreement to what statute it was being set up under. Okay. If, if that's been shared. To, if well, that's just a document that was that. was passed along in the process. So. But, I, but that's the language for the motion, and I would suggest also if the board wants to go forward, the second motion uh, be to uh, to send to the dual representation that I just mentioned. I wouldn't think that this process would involve at some point down the road, uh, an item showing up on your agenda, approve intergovernmental agreement to create West Oakland Transportation Authority. There will be interim status reports. I mean, I would think that once this meeting of attorneys takes place, and I have a better understanding of where all the communities are from a legal perspective, that a supplemental report could be provided to you in terms of where this is headed and how that statutory scheme shakes out so that there'd be another opportunity to say let's put the brakes on here if that was if that was the case and that's i think the, the reason that we chose to have everybody's attorney there is I, we did something with mr deponio where we sat with his attorney and i thought that was very effective having the attorneys sit and hammer it right out there on the spot and that it's I don't think it's going to be a huge issue from the standpoint of everybody have the opportunity to send in their comments and be prepared for that and then um, but I think we would get a lot, a lot better document to have and a lot of brains at the same table looking at it, at it from different perspectives and, uh, and I think you look at things uh, extremely clearly and it'd be interesting to see what else somebody else comes with that we might want to make sure. We want to do this right, and we want to do it right out of the gate. And uh, um, it's a big, it's a big process and a big opportunity. It's also a big shot. You know, we got we've got to make sure that you we don't screw up from the start. We want to make sure everything is uh, right from the day we move out the door. So. Um, 
we do have a fellow named Larry Olbrecht, who is kind of our, our I call him our guru, who uh, was the one who was responsible for um, pretty much setting up NODA. He was a former county commissioner. He's um, an extremely driven individual, very smart. Um, a lot of experience in this stuff. He's got some very good uh, political connections in Lansing. He's got some awesome connections with, uh, for some huge sums of money for grant money. Uh, so we've got some really good opportunities that are there, but we have to get the authority established before we can put the tools to use. So um, I think that uh, I'd like to make the first motion, if we can repeat right. that. Motion to authorize the supervisor to continue pursuit of creation, creating the West Oakland Transportation Authority as outlined this evening. Any support? Support. Okay, moved and supported. Uh, vote, please. Mr. Salvia? Yes. I'm voting no because I, we weren't even given a chance to read through this yet. I'm not, I just don't like voting on things without being able to read the material. So, no. Sorry. Yes. 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 And yes. I vote yes as well. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay, thank you very much. And the next one is to authorize our consent, wow. to, consent dual. to dual. Uh, is, is there anyone on the board that does not have a level of comfort with me representing Highland Township and Waterford Township with respect to coming up with an agreement to create an authority, so long as I'm not doing the financial stuff? No, no. I'm comfortable with that. Then a motion to... Approve, I get this right, Rosati, Schultz, <laughs> Jaffick, and Amps Buchler, and Gary Dovery to represent Highland Township and Waterford Township in the negotiation of the West Oakland Transportation Authority Agreement. With the understanding that the attorneys will not be involved in negotiating the financial and other terms of the agreement where the interests of those two communities are not identical. Support. Yeah, that's my motion. You support. A uh, vote, please. Mrs. McDonough? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Question. Thank you for your verbiage. <laughs> Question. Um, yes. The, what we agreed about you moving forward about discussing this, but that does not, any money that would have to be brought before the board before anything. It's just to. Absolutely. And, okay. and the thing is, is we don't, these are numbers, like the business plan are numbers to, to help make a reality check on it. Um, also, um, you'll notice in the latter part of your documents, I believe there's uh, the page that has all the, yeah, that one you're looking at in the path. Um, for some reason, I don't have it in my might be here. That is a document that shows currently what, um, what we're looking at, Kim, is this one? Oh, it's in the back of the intergovernmental conference. Yeah, it's uh, the Communities 2018 Budgets for Transportation. And what it shows is the amount of money um, that is contributed to the program to date. Oh, okay. uh, based on uh, um, the, the heavy print in the middle shows you who's contributed to what. Uh, you can see White Lake Township puts in $132,062. Um, they have essentially one bus. What's CTP? Uh, that's a transportation. What's, what, what's CTP? The last community count. transportation. Community transportation. Again. That's us. That's, so that's us. us. Okay. Well, it's the program. It's where the grant comes through. Oh, okay. So what it boils down to is it, it gave all the township supervisors a look and go, oh, uh, we're our contribution or how we're contributing are uh, oh, not quite up to the numbers that we would need to uh, see it succeed. 
Um, for instance, uh, the village of Wolverine Lake, their, their contribution is, nobody could really get the number, it's almost nil. Um, Commerce Township gives 26520 and then White Lake puts in 132000 and they do all of the travel for Commerce, Wolverine Lake, and White Lake. So One bus? Well, it's one that's a smart bus and one that's owned by the, the uh, Active Senior Center. Oh. So what the the process is to look at what's the bare bones that we have and what can we do with the bare bones and what are we going to need to make the bare bones uh, blossom and, and function. Uh, so it would include um, these numbers that uh, we have in the business plan would include it purchasing a also purchasing a couple new buses, right, Kim? Yeah, um, it's proposed to purchase right up the door um, four to six buses, not through SMART, but independent buses that would be the authority's personal owned buses. Um, we're following along the lines of NOTA, and at the end of each year, NOTA has been able to purchase two buses outright, which actually they're buying the Econo vans which saved them money and they're getting a much better quality than what SMART has been contracting. Plus, um, it enables them to do more than what they're allowed to do through SMART. Okay. So by doing that, um, it gives them a lot more freedom for their people and to be able to maneuver to a lot of other places because they do take some of their residents outside of the smart territory just because of where they're located which would basically enable um, we've had a lot of requests to go to Brighton and Livingston County is out of the area but Brighton has that brand new um, cancer facility they have two or three dialysis centers and they're not that far I mean, they're, they're closer than us driving to Providence, but we can't go there because territory with SMART says we stop at the line. I mean, we go as far as US 23 because it's just marginally past us and there's a lot of medical facilities right there. But otherwise, to go beyond that, to get to Woodland Medical and several other places out that way, this, this opens a lot of doors up for a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of inner activity and travel, not just for the health needy, but also for those that are, just can't drive and, yeah. or choose not to drive. So, all right. I have a question, too. Did we, uh, we voted on that, didn't we? Yes. I have a question. Okay, well. Didn't I have one, too? Yes. Mary, do you want to go first? I can. Um, so the grant money, um, Kim, so that would just change where the grant money would be funneled to? Yes. Okay, so it doesn't, it wouldn't come, I mean, there's no way that we wouldn't qualify. Correct. Okay, just because of the change to an authority. Um, right. Uh, what it would actually do is it could potentially open the door even wider for grant funding okay. through the FTA because we would be a lot, uh, excuse me, a much larger entity, mm -hmm. so we would have a greater need. Um, one of the benefactors for me applying for the FTA grant when I did is as of last year, as of last year's submissions, they cut off that anybody submitting from that point on will not qualify for funding. They can only qualify for replacement buses or additional buses, but they can't qualify for the funding. Only those who were receiving funding prior to that will continue to qualify for the funding. It's amazing to look across all these communities and nobody else, even if nobody has grant money. And if you look at NOTA, what happens is um, Lynn Gustafson, uh, who's the director of NOTA, is, uh, and works just like Kim does. She's incessant with um, fundraising and finding ways to fund their program and consequently has built it into a, a you know, very solid uh, organization and you you have to have somebody like that that can uh, be successful because and know how to, to do it 
And to expect um, somebody who's running a senior center and doing a part-time bus uh, dispatch job to throw the uh, documentation and requirements for the, these uh, grants at them, it's just not, they're not going to be they successful. Don't they yeah. don't have the time for it. So, all right. Um, I had a question too, Rick. On this, uh, the budget for the transportation, why is there a proposed quarter mill for Highland Township and not any of the rest of the communities? I just don't have their figures. As I mean, far this is as the kind of stuff, you know, we don't even get to look at this and we're moving forward on stuff. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to do the research to find out what's going to happen. What, what, what are we going to be able to do? These are um, shots in the dark uh, at this point. And, um, this I is strictly a planning phase. It's not a commitment to sign any documents phase. But we have to have a planning phase where we know who all would be involved well, going understand. forward so that we can... Because what we're going to do is, well, what I'm going to be doing with the assistance of Larry is once we get the consensus from all the communities that are involved, we technically have a pre woda So we can apply for the grants for the seed money to get this started. But if we don't have a consensus to see who all would be on board, we can't even apply for the seed money to get it going. I understand that. My and the only reason why is no why is down there is the because question in here when we've not even talked about that's that options way. that are available. And the only reason Mil or that Highland is down there is because Highland is the only one whose financials I have right at this moment. So I was so able you're to saying figure you out need a quarter of a mill in order to make go for Highland. That's how much money you need from us to make this go? No, I'm saying that at the maximum, because the way NOTA works is they have a millage. Each of their townships have a millage, a 0.25 millage or a 0.2 millage, whatever brings them into the range that they need. Now, these are your options. You can go with, say, a 0.25 millage to meet your percentage to make this work. Or you can go with a 1.1 millage through SMART. I think the constituents out there would rather pay a 0.25 to see this happen as opposed to a 1.1. Not, and also because it's one quarter of what SMART is offering, as this authority, we can provide a much greater service, just like NOTA does to their communities for one quarter of what SMART charges. So are we gonna lose all the SMART, all this other funding, or is this on top of all this other funding? It's on top of all that other funding. It's the worst case scenario. It's an example. It is not a, I'm asking for your signature. It's an example of the information that I've been able to gather up to this point. The other communities are working to get me the other information. The next meeting, I can provide that the rest of the information for all the other communities. Yes, Gary. My, my turn. I mean, so, so I, I mentioned the crucial document is to create the authority, and, and the, the big crucial thing is how much, how much authority do you give to the authority? I mean, is the authority going to have the ability to determine the level of service to be provided, and hence the cost? Or is that going to be put into that agreement? We are, you know, we, the, these townships are creating this authority, and here's what it's supposed to do. And in that agreement, the communities can define what the authority is to do. You know, how much service is it going to provide? And that's the point in time when each community is probably going to wrestle with and I'm sure you'll have all the information you need. If we want to have the authority provide this level of service, here's what the cost will be. If we want to provide a little bit less service, here's what the cost will be, etc. High level of service, maybe you need a millage. Lower level of service, maybe you don't. But I, I don't think that's 
but, but that's something that if I'm doing my job properly, I'll be pointing you folks in that direction. Here's things for you to consider. You know, because that that document is is crucial. You create an authority, that's easy to do. Wrestling over what its charges, what its responsibilities are, what it may and may not do, that's going to be the, the crux of the matter. Because whatever it can do, it has to be paid for. So that, that's a very significant document. And that maybe can assuage your concern tonight, because there will certainly be an opportunity uh, for the board to weigh in on, okay, we like the idea of an authority. <coughs> We're not quite ready to let it have a blank check. So basically, you're just basing this quarter mill on notice yes. model. Correct. Okay. Just, and then the top the part is what what is actually going in right now. Yes. That's what's actually okay. going on. <coughs> and there's some of the other elements to this are that, um, um, for instance, uh, if there is a millage that occurs through. Uh, uh, the RTA and the money that can come back from uh, the RTA could supplant the uh, um, millage that we might levy. I mean, there's way you know there's ways to look at it, but we have to see how those things play out. And the last thing we want to do is be not be able to play it at all. And uh, but it's going to be um, multiple township supervisors. It's going to be multiple attorneys. It's going to be uh, bringing it back to the board with the uh, numbers and information and uh, multiple discussions. And there's a lot of detail that's going to get worked out. And of course, there's going to be some cost to it. It's not a free lunch at this time, but at some point in the future, that authority should be able to take off on its own. And hopefully we'll have funding from, more funding from federal government and uh, hopefully not the RTA. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> if you're going to get it, that would be the way to make it happen. So. All right, any other questions? Well, in December 4th, we're planning a meeting for all townships and communities, board members to come for a basically a final presentation showing all the numbers, all the documents, exactly the territories, what all is planned, how many vehicles, how many personnel. Um, everything will be laid out in front of everybody. When will December 4th? December 4th. Do you know where? Yes, it'll be at the Dublin Center in White Lake at 10 a.m. Kim, thank you very much for all your work. Thank you. I know you're working hard at it, so. It shows. We're wrong. What's that called exactly? What's the actual meeting called? Is there a meeting for it? Um, it's just the WODA overview. It may not be called WODA. We're just using that as a, Larry had that started, um, Larry Ulbricht started that. In 2009. And uh, it got derailed and uh, he's held all the documentation since then in front of the well, West Oakland Transit Authority. So it's, it, it works, it's simple. Um, all right, on that note, um, meeting adjourned. And thank you. Thank you, Kim.